Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video we are going to be carrying out a synchronisation of the starter valves on my VFR800 VTEC. Now, um, what we need to do part of doing this is the engine needs to be up to operating temperature so that the fast idle wax unit has um, you know, had a chance to do its thing. And obviously what I've done, I've, I've just started it, run it until the, uh, until the fan uh, on the radiator has kicked in. Then I'm happy that it's up to operating temp. What we need to do next, take the tank off, take the lid off the air box, remove the air filter, and then remove the lower portion of the air box from the starter valves so that we can see them. So what I'll do, I'll crack on, I will move, remove all of that stuff, and I'll bring you back in when we're uh, gonna get set up. Okay, as you can see, airbox off, fuel tank, what I've done is I've just turned it around and placed it there on, under a big thick sheet which I folded up. Um, and uh, yeah, everything's removed. What I've had to do is remove the pair system and block the inlets. Um, all I've done is put a bit of tape over it and wrap some more around just to, basically all we're doing is sealing them up um, so that they're vacuum tight. Um, all, the, uh, all the sensors currently are disconnected, uh, all of them. Um, there and there, obviously you've got your air temperature, your map sensor, etc, etc. They're all disconnected. This hose here, what I've done is I've just clamped it so that, it, um, so that it's sealed up so that we haven't got a vacuum leak because we will um, need to start the bike shortly and I don't obviously want all the vacuum leaking out there. What we need to do with the, um, the lower air box, however, is the map sensor does need to be removed and refitted and the, va and the vacuum maintained. Um, the reason for this is because the, uh, the bike will run like an absolute dog with, uh, without, this one, without this one connected and doing its job um, so that the bike can still see it and the ECU will obviously make adjustments accordingly. So what I'll do, remove that from the air box Put the screw back in there so I don't lose it. And then that can go to one side, so we don't need that anymore. And then this simply needs to be reconnected back to its connector. And then the vacuum line reconnected. And that is everything we need to do with regards to that. Now, these are the starter valves here. As you can see, they've got a little hex head on them. This one here on cylinder number four is the non-adjustable one. This is the this is the standard effectively. So that one is the one that everything gets synchronized to. So we'll um, we'll have a look at that in a minute when we actually do it. But as you can see here, you've got little ports. You've got little ports just here and here. And what these start valves do actually is open and close. Um, to turn, you know, and, and it's also um, de um, dependent upon the fast idle wax unit as well because that does have an, uh, an effect. But these little ports open um, and allow air through when the bike's idling because obviously um, it's not like a carburetor system where the, where the carb butterfly is ever so slightly ajar um, to, to allow a small amount of air through to, uh, to allow it to idle. So that's what these are for. They basically allow, um, allow the bike to idle. Um, when it's off throttle and the uh, and the butterflies inside the throttle bodies are completely closed So if you're having difficulty with um, with your idle, it's really bad really poor idle This might be a good place to look So what we need to do is we need to connect a manometer up to each of the uh, each of the starter valves and Just in here right in the center You can see this little this little plastic connector here and as you can see there's five there's five T's off of it, one there in the center and then one that goes to each of the starter valves. So what we need to do is we need to pull the vacuum lines off of each one. Just like, just like that. And then we're left with that. We don't need that at the minute, so we can pop that down to one side. Now, each of these is what we're gonna connect our manometer to. And that's what I'll, uh, I'll go and get out now and show you what I've got. Now, what I will say, um, 
prior to beginning this is all of this vacuum line here is all brand new. I've replaced this um, when I uh, when I did the valve clearances. I replaced it all because I found quite a few that were cracked, split, blah, 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 blah. Obviously, cracked and split vacuum hoses aren't going to promote good running. So we'll replace them all with silicon. Um, four mil, it's four mil inside uh, diameter silicon tubing. Um, it's not expensive. About seven quid, I think it was. I think I, think I bought four meters of it because I thought I might as well do... Uh, you know, over egg it, get a little bit more, and then I can use it later on other bikes if I need to. Um, because the Triumph probably certainly needs a few bits replacing anyway. So, so yeah. So I'll leave a link to that in the uh, in the description if you do want to get some. Um, it's certainly better than going to Honda and paying them for their rubber pipes, which um, it, it, they're they're ridiculous for what is a piece of rubber tube. Um, anyway, I'm digressing slightly. I'll go get the manometer out and we'll have a look at it. Okay. What I've got here is a an old school um, analog carb synchronizer. Now you can use this to um, synchronize the the uh, starter valves on the VFR, and th this is a cheap a cheap device, highly effective. Um, the only problem with them is that they do tend to the needles do tend to be a bit jumpy, and being analog, the accuracy of it isn't absolutely perfect. However. I've used this countless times and it does do the job. It does really do the job, um, especially at the price point that you can pick one of these up. They're, they're super cheap. Um, you can get a mercury type, um, which are basically some long tubes with the mercury levels in and the, the level will go up and down. Again, working exactly the same way as this, it's just a different type. Anyway, what I've got, I'm lucky enough to have a Digisync tool. Now, this uh, the Digisync tool is a digital calibration tool for carburetors, throttle bodies, starter valves, all of that good stuff. And here it is. So, the Digisync um, works in exactly the same way um, as the analog ones, except obviously digital. Um, it self calibrates, and all you need to do is basically connect your lines between this and the carburetor, starter valves, etc., etc., that you're going to uh, that you're going to be adjusting. Um, pretty straightforward and really, really simple to use. As you can see, this one is a six six channel version. Um, they come in a two channel, four channel, or six channel, depending upon what you require for your particular bike, car, etc. Because obviously, you can use this on car throttle bodies as well, where they where they have individual throttle bodies. Um, obviously, if you've only got a single throttle body, there's no balancing required, so don't get confused by that. Um, so what we need to do in, in order to use this, it is magnetic, which is a bit, bit, of, a, bit of a bonus. What we need to do in order to use it is we need to connect it up. Now, I only need four of the lines, so I'll pop two of them to one side. And each one needs to basically be connected to the hoses that we disconnected on the five-way um, T. So I'll get them all connected up and then I'll bring you back in and then we'll have a look at what we're going to be doing. Right, what I've done, all of the lines are connected up to each of the ones to the, each, of the, uh, each of the starter valves and obviously what I've done then, I've connected them up in order. So cylinder one goes to the first one, cylinder two, cylinder three, cylinder four. And as I said before, cylinder four here is the one that is not adjustable that we're adjusting everything to. So, what we need to do now is we need to turn it on and on the little screen we can see it's uh, going to do a little calibration um, it takes a few seconds to boot up and then it'll uh, it will give us the uh, the median there we go and here we are right what we need to do now on on here the beauty of this device is it can uh, tell you what the rpm is of the bike obviously it uses the vacuum pulses to, uh, to to detect that so it's pretty accurate so what we need to do is turn it on start the engine and run it up it probably it may well be a bit of a dog to start um, because it's missing sensors and stuff like that so we may find that it's a bit of a pain to start however once it's running we'll pay attention to the rpm because the rpm needs to be 1200 RPM plus or minus 100 RPM. So it could be as low as 1100, as high as 1300. And we need to set that before we carry any adjustments. And to adjust that, we simply turn this little, this little hand wheel here. If it's a bit stiff to turn, there is a screwdriver um, head inside, which you can get a screwdriver in there and turn it if, uh, if you need to. So what we'll do, we'll fire her up. <laughs> Yeah. 
there we go. As I said, it was a little bit of a dog to start there, um, but it, it's running now. So looking at the RPM, it's yeah, it's a little bit low. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go around and adjust that um, just to bring it up a touch, and then we'll look at the uh, look at the values we've got. As you can see, cylinder one, one two three, cylinder two, one one seven, cylinder three. 120 and cylinder four the non-adjustable one is 105 so we need to bring all of these down to match cylinder four so i'll, I'll get the um i'll get the uh idle speed adjusted first So it's hovering now between 1200 and 1300. So I'm happy with that, that'll do. That'll do. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with that. Right, so what we need to do now is we need to adjust each of the cylinders to bring them down so they're the same as cylinder, cylinder four. So if I start at cylinder one, for example, which is this one here, what we need to do is adjust this. And just in here, it's effectively a piston. And if I adjust it, if you look very closely, you should be able to see it move. Move around inside if I can get my fingers on it. Not sure if that's showing up or not. You can see it going in and out. I'm not sure if you can just see it inside this hole. Okay, so what we need to do going back to our little screen is we need to adjust it in whatever direction it needs it's probably going to be anti-clockwise because we need to take it out um, in order to bring that down to match cylinder four so what i'll do i'll bring it out and as you can see it's gone up so i'll go clockwise and there we go yeah so i, I went anti-clockwise and it made it, the figure go up so we actually need to go clockwise. And it's down at 101. Give it a little rev, let it settle, and as you can see, Cylinder one is now the same as cylinder four. So I'm happy that that one's synchronized. Um, what I need to do is now move on to cylinder two, which is this one here. Do the same thing. Going clockwise, because I need to bring it down, which we discovered a moment ago. in the same ballpark I'm going to give cylinder one another little adjustment just to bring it down a touch more cylinder three again it's a little bit of trial and error 
keep adjusting them until such time as they're all in the right way. Don't forget, of course, um, unless the bike's up to temperature, the fast idle unit is also adjusting the starter valve. Hence the reason why they need to be up to temperature before we start. So, whilst I was messing around, obviously it did cool down a little bit, so we do need to uh, take that into account. fluctuate between between around 107 one of uh, anywhere between 107 and 114 so I've set them all at or around 110 uh, and I'm happy with that that's pretty bang on um, and it's certainly more accurate than we would have achieved with the dial analog gate so so yeah I'm uh, I'm happy with that let's stop it now um, I could turn this off and that is the job done. All I've got to do is um, put everything back on and uh, we can call that job, uh, job complete. Um, there is a little, bit of, um, a little bit of tweaking involved. Once you've made an adjustment, just give the throttle a little blip just to let it uh, settle down again and then you'll, um, you'll get a good accurate reading. As I said, uh, cylinder four was jumping anywhere between, um, you, you, there, was a, there was a range of around about 15, uh, 15 points. And what I've done is I've tried to balance all the other three into the centre of that range. And yeah, I'm, uh, I'm confident that that's um, going to be good. So that is the job done. All I need to do, put it back together and start her up and make sure we've got no vacuum leaks. So I'll get it all in and then I'll fire it up at the end and we'll check. Okay, as you can see, everything's back on, airbox back on, tank down and bolted up. What we need to do now is just fire her up. So what we're doing here, just making sure that she idles right. If she doesn't, chances are you've forgotten a vacuum line. Uh, if you forget to, um, forget to connect the vacuum line, you'll, it will run like a dog, um, it will struggle to idle, and it will probably stall quite a lot. So if you do experience that, go back, check, your, uh, check all your vacuum lines, and that's probably where the problem is. Anyway, what we need to do next, one last thing, because, I'll stop it, because we've had all of the uh, sensors disconnected, blah, 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 and we've had the engine running and all that sort of good stuff, the, the bike will store some fault codes. So what we need to do is um, just delete them, basically. Uh, erase all the fault codes and um, we should be good. What I'll do though, I'll make that a separate video, so um, I'll put the link to that in the top corner now. Depending upon what device you're on, you should be able to see that. If not, uh, the link to that video will be in the description. Anyway, guys, um, Thank you very much for stopping by. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, don't forget to join me on the socials, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And I'll see you all again for the next one. Take care now. Bye-bye.